Hi, and welcome to the Frog Pond School of Design, where we talk about a wide variety of architectural issues and try to have a good time doing it. Flat roofs always leak. Boy, have I heard that a lot uh, over the years. It's been uh, a common refrain <laughs> from people. Um, and, and for good cause. I mean, there was a time when um, flat roofs had a really lousy reputation for leaking, and there were even calls to make them illegal, um, which I think is a little bit uh, outdated today because a lot's happened since, uh, since that time. That time, it, actually, I'm talking about was probably 40 or 50 years ago. Uh, I happened to be in a situation where I was working uh, for a large uh, university. We had over 200 buildings to take care of, so we did a lot of roofing over time. And I noticed that we had 40-year-old roofs that could get by with just a little maintenance, and at the same time we had 10-year-old roofs that were absolutely falling apart. And you know, what were we going to do about this? Uh, the, the the idea of getting rid of flat roofs altogether didn't make a lot of sense because um, if you take away houses and other small commercial buildings, the vast majority of buildings have flat roofs simply because as, as a building gets larger, simple geometry means you have more and more roof up there for what little building is down below it. So that wasn't an answer. So what do you do? about the fact that um, you've got newer roofs that, that just aren't holding together. Well, the first thing you have to do is try to figure out what's going on. And as it turns out, believe it or not, this rampant roof failure was actually a result of the energy crisis and rising fuel costs. You see, the back in the day, <laughs> the best roof you could put on was called a built-up roof, and they would call that because it was built up of layers of roofing felt and a melted black bituminous material coming out of a hot pot, a kettle, uh, up on the roof, mopping these things in as you go, and you put about five layers of, of the felt mopped in, and um, it makes a pretty good roof. But when the refineries started getting greedy and trying to get more good stuff out of the crude, the quality of the byproduct that went to the roofing industry, among others, uh, really plummeted. And the, people really didn't realize this until uh, it was too late and the roof failures started to show up. So uh, how do you respond to that? Well, there had been a lot of manufacturers out there trying to develop what they called single-ply roofs. These were sheets, mainly plastic or rubber-based, uh, that could just be rolled on the roof, seamed together, and you walk away with, with a good roof in place, right? Uh, uh, specifiers and, uh, and roofers were uh, are, are traditionally a little bit slow to, to catch on to new things, so these things were were slow coming about until we realized that uh, roofs aren't working. <laughs> so they started mo moving on to the single plies. Some of those failed too until they got the bugs worked out. Uh, but eventually the single ply roof took over the industry and things got a lot better. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about the term flat. Back in the day, again, flat roof meant flat, dead level, which is easy to build, but it doesn't do a very good job of getting the water off the roof very quickly. And the longer the water sits up there, the more time it has to, uh, to deteriorate that bituminous material, which is an organic material and to some degree is always going to be a little bit water soluble especially if you had ponds which were common um, you know where some of the insulation got compressed or something you'd collect water and then you got standing water on the roof which which isn't doing any good either so you know I mentioned earlier there were calls to make flat roofs illegal in a way that's kinda happened because the building codes stepped up and said okay we're gonna require 
a minimum slope on the roof. Now it's like a quarter of an inch per foot of roof. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it sure uh, has a, a beneficial effect on getting the water off the roof. And that's contributed mightily to the uh, uh, longevity of, of our roofs today. So between those two things, uh, you know, things have gotten a whole lot better. And, uh, you know, maybe the problems we had were a, a fault of the roof configuration, the materials, whatever. Um, the people came together and came up with a solution to this. I should also note that these newer materials, uh, besides being more dependable, easier to apply, um, eliminate that hot pot up on the roof and, and this black goopy material which um, would burn your skin and, and cause irritation and everything. Uh, they also go on quicker, easier, and perform better for a longer period of time and probably at lower cost. They're also available in white to uh, minimize heat buildup in the roof. So uh, a lot of things have come together and uh, you know, once the mind of the specifiers and, and the roofers actually opened up to these newer products, things got a whole lot better real fast. And uh, hopefully we've returned the flat roof, um, which isn't really flat anymore, to a level of respectability. Isn't it great when things come together? <laughs> Hey, thanks for joining us today at the Frog Pond School of Design. I look forward to seeing you hanging around the pond again real soon.